This is an interesting move here. Donald Trump certainly does not want to halt arms sales to Saudi Arabia. He's had nothing but great things to say for MBS. Uh, but this brazen abduction and murder is making it harder uh, for Trump. So what does Trump do? He goes to a tried and true, which is that they're not being fair to us. Uh, I would say they're excellent. I've told them they've got to pay for their military. You know, Saudi Arabia has a is a very rich country. And for years and years, there would be no Saudi Arabia if there wasn't a United States because we protected them. And we don't get paid for this protection. We should be paid. We spend billions and billions of dollars a year protecting Saudi Arabia. And I've told the king, King Salman, I said, King, sorry, you got to pay. I said that but, loud and clear. But, and <laughs> king? King? That's like Lisa's dad in Coming to America calling king, Choppy sorry. Joe for... King? King? <laughs> king, sorry, King. Sorry, King. Now, of course, this is like classic Trump bullshit because actually like the Saudi army is essentially a giant arms subsidy for us. We have trainers there. We sell them all their weaponry and arms sales have increased significantly in the Trump era, even in the already leading uh, arms market, arms export in the world, which is the United States. So I don't know exactly how that's going to work, but... You could tell that this story is causing him a little bit of stress because he's pivoting to his usual bullshit on it. Um, I do like Ashley Ainsley's dress in that clip, though. You mean uh, uh, Ainsley Earhart? Ashley, Ashley. I, I prefer to think of her as oh, okay, Ashley yeah. Ainsley. She probably does have an Ashley in her name somewhere. We just haven't found it. Wait, it is I just want to no. expropriate it and use it to make an anarcho-communist flag. I could see that. It's a good color palette for that. It is the color palette for that. Then uh, Trump is going to speak uh, more directly to uh, his concern about the disappearance of uh, Jamal Khashoggi uh, at the Oval Office. I, I don't want to make. I don't want to say that. I hope he's not. I hope he's not. Well, I have to find out who did it, but. Uh, People saw him go in, but they didn't see him come out, as they understand it. And we're going to take a very serious look at it. It's a terrible thing. Uh, I'd rather not say, but the answer is yes. The question asked there was, have you spoken to Saudi nationals about this? I'd rather not say, but the answer is yes. Donald Trump still actually so far from the public record, I'm sure behind the scenes, he doesn't care about this and this will not interfere with anything structurally, but on the public record is doing a better job than Thomas Friedman on this one. I also would just like to say like... I wonder who's getting more money from uh, the Saudis? Kushner. Friedman or Trump? Uh, Kushner. <laughs> no. Right. Maybe if he wasn't so critical. Uh, do we have another clip on yeah, this? Yeah, there's one more. I'll come up here. You want to introduce this clip, Matt? Uh, I think we should just watch it. It's it's Trump continuing on Khashoggi. And okay, the yeah, office. let's continue on this. Yeah. So what good does that do us? There are other things we can do. Well, do you think they should pay a price? If it, if it turns yeah, out it's there'll, there'll be something that has to take place. First, I want to find out what happened. And we're looking. Again, this took place in Turkey. And to the best of our knowledge, uh, Khashoggi is not a United States citizen. Is that right? Or permanent is that right? Resident. He's a permanent resident. Okay. We don't like it, John. We don't like it. And we don't like it even a little bit. Mm -hmm. But as to whether or not we should stop $110 billion from being spent in this country, knowing they have four or five alternatives, two very good alternatives, that would not be acceptable to me. Okay. But we're looking for the answer. And I think probably you'll have an answer sooner than people think. Thank you very much. I have to say that actually is Trump expressing the essence of the U.S. Saudi relationship, because that going back to we're not really going to press them on the potential connections between certain members of the royal family and the September 11th terrorist attacks. We're going to fly out bin Laden's uh, other you know, relatives living in the United States the day after those attacks. And that at the end of and that even as we know that they sort of spread, fund and propagandize um, and arm 
terrorist groups and propagate, you know, incredibly fanatical right wing views of religion, not to mention their own abominable domestic human rights record. We're going to work with them because we need their oil. And also because, as he's saying there, huge arms export market and also they're liquid as hell. And they have a lot of money to spend on, well, let's just, I don't know, I'm, it could be anything, but let's just say for this example, I don't know, tacky, gaudy, luxury high-rises in Manhattan. It's working, and it's very exciting. Exactly. Yeah, they're going to press them about as hard as the FBI pressed the Kavanaugh investigation. Maybe even less. There might not even be one. I but mean, yes, in that realm. What exactly. might need to happen is when Democrats come back into power, some sort of FBI investigation and to Jared Kushner's security clearance and the disappearance of James Khashoggi, or Jamal Khashoggi. I mean, you know, but also let's, there are some Democrats who will, pr I mean, Bernie, <laughs> Bernie had a great foreign policy speech last week. He definitely connected global oligarchy with the rise of global authoritarianism. He talked about the political imprisonment of Lula. He talked about the mass murder uh, that we are conducting with the Saudis and the uh, Emiratis in Yemen. Uh, and he also specifically talked about Jamal Khashoggi. He might do something. I, I'm not entirely convinced. You know, uh, the Saudis have maybe been a bit closer to Republicans. Certainly the Bush family and the Saudis were quite close. But um, uh, Saudi intimacy is a bipartisan affair <laughs> in Washington, uh, as is... Uh, uh, Gulf states generally. We fondled the orb together. We touched the orb together. You're calling from a seven.